nothing like a good old DDoS attack. Nothing like a good old DDoS attack. But I am going to submit the threats I received before this show started from a man. A fat man named Jeremiah was threatening me and then the show went down before it could start. So I think he has something to do with it. And he's not the best at keeping secrets because I know he's not able to do it because he's a moron. But he probably could get somebody to do it and he squeals. So I am going to contact um, because these happened at the same time somebody threatened to take me out. Um, I'm assuming that I can connect the dots. So um, I think it was a mistake telling me you were going to attack me. Um, you know? Um, and we did get the video. You, you did delete the video, but we do have the video. So, you know, nice try taking your video down, threatening me, but, uh, we got it. We got it recorded. We, do we downloaded it before you got rid of it. So with all the other attacks that have gone on, you know, this will make, uh, interesting case and it is a half a million dollars, uh, Very interesting. Hey now. All right, yo, what's up, everybody? We are live for the uh, 50 minute late. Uh, thank you to uh, the DDoSers. Uh, gotta love DDoS. Gotta love DDoS attacks. Man, I, I really should have made tonight the night this show goes on Patreon. <laughs> I was gonna make tonight the Patreon show. I should have done it. 
Um, all my notes are gone. So I get harassed every day in videos and every week in videos. People do two hour streams on me and they build people up like angry trolls up who want to attack me. And they've been doing it for over a year. You know, you can't get rid of these people. You get rid of them and they still do it. They every day bash and they bash and they threaten to take you down and threaten this and that. And, you know, at, the, at some point it's like, just fucking kill me already. Just come to my house and kill me. If, like, you want me like so bad to not be on YouTube and you know what I mean? You want me so bad to not be on YouTube, you know, obsessing about me every second so that I have to reply to all the bullshit and I have to keep replying to your shit. And then if you don't reply, they do something crazy. You know, it's just nobody deal like JD doesn't deal with this. That fucking New York midget faggot in New York, JD, who fucking had the nerve to shit on me like when some of the listeners gave him shit and said, you're fucking listeners, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, dude, you, you haven't lost Twitter. I, I lost Twitter for less than what JD says. I've lost six months multiple times on YouTube due to videos that I didn't do anything wrong. JD never has. It's like the guy fucking complains about a couple of trolls. I just think about that guy complaining about trolls and then shitting on me. Yet he's never lost his channel for a year or six months or three months or four months at a time or ever had nine different Twitter accounts because he's banned for saying something that isn't even bad, really. But yet he can say fucking all these words and all these other things. And, you know, he can even get in a fight with the entire WWE locker room and fucking nothing ever happens to him. And he just goes, ha, ha, ha. Whatever. But no, that's always me. Yo, uh, Jake, uh, if you want to call, bro, I'm ready. I'm on Skype, dude. Are you on Skype, Jake? What are you doing? Uh, my intro was to delay for Jake, but... <laughs> I don't know what happened yeah twitter's a piece of shit twitter's a shithole twitter is a pile of shithole the state of new york is a pile of shithole canada is a pile of shithole i need to stop sticking up for people who keep bashing me what are you talking about who, who am i sticking up for oh jd when i when i stuck up for him yeah i won't stick up for him ever again He's a piece of shit. Guy cry. I, like, I've literally been censored for like eight years on YouTube and fought through it. And he just skates free without any problems ever. Ever. Yeah, I don't even think I remember him ever losing a fucking Twitter account. Ever. It's just fun. You know, I just think about him crying to me about uh, crying to me, bitching to me about trolls. Don't tell me about trolls, you midget fuck. Fuck you. Go fuck Solomon Monster and his fucking asshole. You fucking cunt. You're welcome for the fucking goddamn fucking format, you fucking cunt. I hope JD fucking gets in a car fucking crash. <laughs> and then Solomon Monster eats his fucking organs on the side of the road. And then I hope fucking... Steven Larson fucked their assholes in on the side of the road. Hey, what's up, baby? There we go. What's up, baby? I didn't know we were going on Skype. I sent you a message, you fuck. Yeah, the audio didn't load from it, so I didn't hear it till you said it on stream. Oh. Yeah, Discord's a fucking... It's out of so I lost all my notes. I actually, it's funny because I don't normally have notes for out of nowhere, but there was so much news. I wrote all these specific notes tonight. I had specific notes of key things. And I even fucking wrote like st time stamps of things to play and <laughs> all these things work. that I wanted to do. You don't do research. You know that. Come on. Don't lie. <laughs> 
Bro, I did all kinds of shit tonight. Like, I, I can't even believe it. I wish I didn't. Don't feel bad. I can't even read an article, so we're all right. No, but I had them all, bro. Well, I got like 30 tabs open and a bunch of stickies all over my desktop, so we'll be all right. Anyway, finally we'll able to through. start this show an hour later. That's cool. Um, Let me play a donation or two. I guess there's a couple or something. Because uh, that will give me a yeah, yeah. second. <laughs> Joe is a loser who can't even protect his own internet from attacks and then blames it on the dumbest person ever. Bullfrog makes empty threats all the time. Just like when he threatened to shoot you Joe. Cardinals versus Seahawks was a great game tonight. I missed it. I missed it. I missed the game. Was it good? I mean, you said it was good, so it was guess, I guess it was good. I, I wish I could do the Ryback voice, but my throat's fucked. Yeah, my 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 four year old has it as sick as hell. It's like breathing problems and stuff. He had this back in February. He's got it again. He's like. <laughs> So I've been checking on him at night. And uh, Brenna is way... My daughter's way better. And Lee is not bad. Now, Lee is a little bad. But I'm fine. I feel fine. I lost my voice. That has nothing to do with being sick. I'm not really sick. I fucking... My body just shit on it, I feel like. The only reason why I sound like I'm sick is because I lost my voice a week ago. So uh, it's not that bad. So anyway, um, where do you want to start with this shit tonight? Uh, we I had notes. Uh, they're gone. I do have a little bit of notes. I guess let's start with the Undertaker cameo shit. Yeah, oh. there's a lot of stuff coming out with Undertaker. Uh, yeah, he's everywhere, the fucking guy. The first being WWE announced that the Undertaker is joining cameo for a limited time only. It's only until this Sunday, November 22nd, and it's only for 30 cameos. So he's wow. only doing 30 of these, and right now uh, there are 15 left. What's the so point? So WWE has already made $15,000. Why are they doing that? I have no idea. It's not for charity. I, I asked a few people. People said the same. It's not for charity. It's not uh, like it's just a special promotion to have the Undertaker record a cameo off his cell phone for you for a thousand dollars. Much as I love the Undertaker, it's not even a two minute meet and greet that you get for one hundred and fifty dollars with cricket. He's literally recording a 30 second message on his cell phone to send to you for a thousand dollars. I just can't justify that. A thousand dollars a cameo, and this money's going right back to WWE. This is exactly what they wanted oh when they God, took I'm away so third party. Funny. Oh, oh God, man, I'm so sorry. I didn't. Oh I didn't know God, I wasn't so paused. Funny. Happy fucking birthday! Holy oh shit! So fucking horny! That scared oh the God, fuck out so of me. Honey. Oh my God! So horny! Happy birthday! Oh, honey, honey, honey! Donation, donation time, time. Put it in my round bum. Oh my god, it's the harsh truth, Frank. Oh, I wrote this in his chat earlier. Get me off. X zero by zero. <laughs> I was watching Frank earlier, and I, I think I wrote this in his chat. I think I wrote get me off in his chat. I don't 100% remember, but I'm pretty sure that's why he wrote that. What's up, Tra uh, Frank? How you doing, man? Get me off. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Fucking the fucking... The goddamn hackers got me off tonight. Got me off the air. Shout out to Jake DeMarco looking sexy. Tonight. Thank you, Frank, for the $16. That's Jake's favorite donation. The poor bastard can't hear it tonight, though, now that we're not on Discord. So, sorry. But uh, thank you, Harsh Truth Frank. Good God, that scared the fuck out of me. It was great that they weren't paused because it actually scared me. Um, Fucking yeah. Well, Frank the Tank keeping us loaded for the beginning. So here we go. Let's roll now. Here we go. We got we the sexy out of the way. Did I mute you? I muted you. There you go. There we go. Now I'm unmuted. Frank dropping it in. Yeah, this is exactly why WWE wanted their cameo, <laughs> you know, third party accounts taken away from their stars so they could do things like this. Uh -huh. It's not even a month into, you know, them taking away everybody's accounts on Halloween and it's already begun. They're going to do features like this going forward as well. You're going to be able to join WWE specific fan clubs. They even want to start a subscription service possibly. 
So there's all sorts of stuff that WWE is going to be doing moving th- uh, forward. WWE has plans for Twitch accounts. They want to do things with uh, up, up, down, down in-, in lieu of that. So, you know, same idea. There's a bunch so of things going is, forward. It's just to make WWE more money. This is probably one of those things where Cameo likes it because... They're getting a huge cut of $1,000. Well, not only that, but really it's the publicity of the site. And, oh, yeah. It's and huge it, to get a big star like The Undertaker. W, so WWE can just roll out a different person each time. So when you're like, oh, he's only doing 50, that doesn't make any sense. Well, it does because they don't care. Undertaker doesn't really care about it. He's doing it for the WWE. Uh, exactly. So he's a company man. He's going to do, you know, but, but like I said, it's not going for charity. It's not... Uh, it's just Jesus. headed to WWE's pocket. I mean, you can get both brand new consoles for this. Literally, walk out the door with a PlayStation 4. Or one on eBay Xbox right Series now. X. Or one on eBay because you probably can't get you, a console right now. It, you Well, theoretically, but I'm saying, you know, it's a cost. Them. And it, it's minus scalpers. Bastards they are. It's just, it's disgusting to see it. You know, MJF, people are saying, well, he was 500. MJF did it as a joke. He looked up who the highest priced wrestlers were and said, well, I'm worth more and put himself higher. And it was just a, you know, a, kind of like a kayfabe thing because he didn't really want to do the cameos. Right. That was he didn't the really whole point behind it. But it was a joke. He wasn't serious about it. A thousand dollars for a recorded video on your cell phone. I love The Undertaker. I would probably pass out if I met him one on one to talk. You know what I mean? I, I think he's Wasn't an icon and a hero of mine. Ric Flair was five hundred, I believe. If I remember. Yeah, Ric Flair was was extremely expensive at one point. I don't know what he costs but now. See, but see, I I can see that because cam- it's a pain in the ass. You keep getting the you'd get a million cameos. Like if you're the Undertaker, you get a million all day long. Like you don't really want to like you don't. Unfortunately, you don't want to make three hundred cameos a day. And if the Undertaker was at like. 50 bucks or even 150 bucks the undertaker would be making fucking 100 cameos a day at 150 he'd be making 100 a day and it's like hey there josh you know like it's like fucking he oh my god dude it's so much it's it's a lot of work believe it's not a lot of work but it is a lot of work to like yeah it's still time consuming it, but like make, montez uh, ford is 125 dollars through wwe now if you notice on their pages if they're back up a lot of their pages like dexter loomis roman reigns there's still a lot that are down but if they have the actual WWE symbol on their account, then it yeah. means WWE verified. Like Roman Reigns doesn't have that, but Montez Ford does, and that's why he's getting a cut out of it. But it all goes to their downside guarantee, which is guaranteed money anyways. So really, they're not earning anything extra. They're just getting paid more up front because they're not able to earn that right now. Ric Flair, he's not official because he's not under, you know, with the Legends contract. I don't know if he has to comply to any of this. But he donates a hundred dollars of every cameo he does to the CDC Foundation. So yeah. technically, it's it's still five hundred dollars, but four hundred goes to him, and there's money cut out of that. So you figure three fifty for a video from Ric Flair. I can I can see people justifying you know that process of the cost. It's still five hundred, but I think the Undertaker doesn't know this kind of makes him look bad, but it's not his fault. He's basically being. Like like he signed. He's being fi- paraded and marched out. Yeah. Right, he was signed 15 years by the WWE, and the WWE says, "Hey, you have an appearance here. Hey, you have an appearance here. Hey, we've got a partnership with Cameo, and you're going to be the featured guy this month." Okay, sounds good. What do you got? What do I got to do? So you got to record these like messages, and they're going to hit you up with the email about how to do it and everything. People are just going to like they basically are paying. Companies are going to pay for you, like stuff like that. I, it's probably going to be a lot of companies and people going all in, like 15 fans. Yeah, like they did it for Hot Ones. That yeah. was one today, and that like, was. Actually, very entertaining. That was that was a fun. Wait, oh, wait, they did it for Hot Ones. They did a cameo for Hot Ones. Went and uh, he's doing the whole little publicity tour. Oh yeah, yeah, but he didn't do a cameo for Hot Ones. No, no, no. I'm saying he's going everywhere promoting Survivor Series. So WWE is sending him all over to promote Survivor Series. Right. They're marching him out and being like, "You're going to do this. You're going to go here. You're going to speak to this." You know, he did a half an hour with them. He did a half an hour. He's got something coming up with, I believe, Sean Ross. He's got something coming up. You know, it's it's all these, you know, people are getting to talk to the taker. Okay, that's all well and good. But like well, you said, this makes him look bad. And especially because Cameo is not really known for being a company uh, involved. You know, it, it's typically it's the star themselves. It's, it's the celebrity, the influencer, however you want to phrase it. It's them under their own doing seeking this out so wwe usually was not involved beforehand so people see this and they're like wow undertaker's charging a thousand dollars it's just a bad look on him mm, yeah 
Yeah, it really is. Um, I think Especially I, when you see a lot of others doing at least partial or some for charity. There, I think I'm going to start like a company called Racial Awareness. And we're going to bring racial awareness and racial justice awareness. And we're going to go to work places and speak to the white people there about how bad they are. And I think I can get a lot of donations from companies and be a nonprofit and then pay myself a salary of $300,000 a year. Hey, there you go. I really think I can do that. I think it's wow. a great idea. I mean, Susan B. Coleman does it. I mean, I think I could really get away with that. Yeah, racial awareness. We're, and we're I'll, just and raising I'll, awareness. I'll we're not doing like, anything. We're just raising I'll awareness. I'll use all my, all my jokes I've ever made over the last 10 years. I'll use them all as examples of why I started this business to show people, like, I didn't understand how my words hurt. You know, and I didn't understand why I was losing friendships and why I was, why I was let go of my job. And after, like, I, I, I had shrink sensitivity trainings and all these things and just history that I never knew before. I didn't understand my effect on the world. And, and you, you know, you've and reformatted and reeducated yourself. And, yeah, and just I, was re yourself, I was reeducated, really. camped. And so, mm -hmm. like, now I'm here to tell you and, and to help you guys so that this doesn't happen in your workplace. And so you realize every day it can't just be it can't just be once in a while. It's gonna be every day when you look in the mirror, you gotta go, I am guilty of I'm white and I'm guilty. And and that's you know, I think that's gonna be really important training for these companies, um, especially with a bunch of crackers working at them. Uh and I'll and you know what I like I said, I'll get donations from all kinds of groups and people and I'll 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 reach out to every Hollywood celebrity there is to say, Listen, I work for this company and this is our goal. And, you know, we'll put your name on the plaque and everything. And, of course, you know, Anne Hathaway will be a big sponsor. You know, <laughs> Yeah, she'd jump on that. Right. R rights Anybody for, that's saying in that Imagine video, you can get right away. Right. Racial justice awareness. Uh, I don't know. We'll be ra ra the, the only. It will, we'll be. We'll be. Um, we'll be uh, the only. The most honest racial justice uh, company in the, in the world. It will be amazing. We'll be. We'll even go to Asia. If they've got a couple white people working in China, even like we'll talk about how, you know, you're you can be a scary, you know, you can be intimidating here and you have to realize this is not your land. And you need to, you know, you, you may see an, another Asian worker and realize, you know, that your shoes are better than his for some reason. Right. And you're coming into his country and he grew up in a different place and you were privileged with everything in America. And now you're going to China and this guy worked for everything. So you should switch shoes with him. And that should, and you know, he and his kids probably made your shoes. So, like, I'm gonna be great at. The, I'm gonna be going around, and I'm gonna get so many donations from You're so just many companies. You're gonna be right on top of this. Now I exactly. gotta talk to the chat for a second, because chat, how long till Joe snaps and <laughs> loses this business? Uh, no, how I don't. How long till Joe explodes? <laughs> I'm gonna love the business because I'm gonna get paid three hundred thousand dollars. Because as long as I donate eighty percent of the money. Yeah, then you're you're doing a good deed. Can you imagine that? It's, so the, it's the, the just me. The paycheck will keep you sa satiated right. and calm. I'll there tell them that I have employees and interns and volunteers, and I won't. It will just all be me. And <laughs> and, and then on the marquee, eighty percent of the funds go to racial uh, injustice awareness and to our you know training and shit. Like people will be like, oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, we raised nineteen million dollars last year. And then, I, and, and then I get to keep 20% of it. It's fucking amazing. Like, it's this, I love 20%. America. I love America, don't you? Oh, my God. Or or, I, or maybe I'll do, um, maybe I'll do breast cancer. I'll, I'll, I'll do, like, I'll do breast cancer, mother's breast cancer. Or I'll do find a rare cancer ovarian that, cancer. Oh, yeah. we got, oh, Those are all rare, right. But... Everyone does that. We can't do that. We yeah. can't do liver cancer, cancer. Everyone does breast. Everyone does, um, uh, pancreatic maybe we find a cancer that's weird here find we go something adenoid no cystic carcinoma there you our go our adenoid cystic carcinoma do you know what that is like and i'll say that's how my pitch will go do you know what andre oh. casanova Sorry, I think my neighbor just died Continue. what i said i think my neighbor just died I heard Why? somebody fall Jesus. oh really you go well, you gotta go check go check <laughs> i thought they have covid <laughs> Um, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Uh, we're going to come up with a cancer that's really rare. And I'm going to spy. And I'm going to be like, do you understand? And people will be like, oh, my God, I never heard about that. And what I'll do is I'll pull the most worst stories. Right? Like, yeah, so listen, only f like, listen, 500 people die of it a year. But it's super traumatic. And yeah, colon's Cronin, Cronin's colon cancer awareness. That's that goes together actually. To yeah, be there honest. we go. Adenoid cystic carcinoma is actually it's an oral cancer. So oh. there you go. 
and maybe I'll get it. I mean, listen, yeah, so oral sex, you know, it's it's in the trachea and, and mostly mm-hmm. in the salivary glands. I fucked so a I lot of pussy with my mouth. So yes, it's, see, perfect. Now we're you're a survivor. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. That's the story we'll tell. And so, you know, I'll just say I could have gotten it because I could have gotten it. But I you survived. I ate so much. Kept you healthy and you want to spread awareness on how to keep people healthy. I ate so much box that I might. Yeah. I could have had it. It could have been. It could be me. It could be you. Uh, it could you know, be they always kids. say eat healthy. You got a tongue as much poon as possible. Right. That's what's keeping you healthy. Crohn cancer or maybe Crohn's disease. Crohn's is like Cronin. So Crohn's disease. That would be great. 69 last night. Today, I don't have COVID still. I'm telling you, there's yep. got to be a correlation. Crohn's and col- colitis. Colitis is another one. A lot of people don't know colitis. That's a bad just one. That's not cancer. the whole gambit here. Yeah, and basically all I have to do is just do what I'm saying, which is go around and speak about it or like tell people about it. And if I do that, I can keep 80% of the proceeds. We need one that's very difficult to pronounce. Yeah. You know that that's like 30 syllables and 500 letters. Yeah, we gotta I've find got to find one of those too. I've got undertaker disease. <laughs> but uh undertaker we got epithelial, is a myel, epithelial carcinoma, you know, one of those that just keeps rumbling off the tongue. Yeah. But see, already Joe snapped. I called it. Yep, we got it. See, he already ran out. Money's gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, the Undertaker, he's been running his mouth, and it's great that they're touting him everywhere, getting back to wrestling, because it's it's great that we get to see this side of him, I think. You know, the character's been so guarded for so long, and this is we, we did rave about the, you know, the Last Ride documentary series. And now with Undertaker talking, you know, we get to find out more about him, and it, it's very intriguing and interesting. He said, you'd laugh if you watched me watch wrestling, if there was a camera there to capture me. And it actually made me think of you. But he said, I have these conversations and I'm sure it's pretty amusing because he literally he's like yelling at the TV. He says that he gets so into it that he's telling people like what they should be doing next. He can't watch just as a fan. He gets Uh, too involved. That's hilarious. And uh, he said one of his biggest worries right now is The Fiend. He says, I'm very nervous about how WWE is going to handle the character. I love his character. I love it, but I get nervous because sometimes they want to overproduce things. We know that. He has such a good grasp of that character. I get nervous. Just let it go. Let it Too simmer. late. Don't try to throw all the gasoline on that at one time. Yeah, they've done this already. But he said he's the new age dark side kind of guy and he's doing a great job. So that's a huge compliment to basically call Bray the new Undertaker in a sense. You know, that, that that's what he's doing here. And the Undertaker wrestled his dad who was the tax man, which is hilarious. Yeah. So I, it's just uh, full circle talk about there. But the Undertaker was this know, on Hot Ones because I watched some of Hot Ones. Hot Ones was really pretty good. Hot Ones was very good. Uh, no, this was with USA Today that he said this. He was on Hot Ones. He was in USA Today. He did five other publications. He did The, b- yeah, the, b- the Bump uh, or whatever. He was, he was on, on Vibe bump. and Wrestling. He was on, I, I have notes Jesus. all over the place. There he was talking about uh, Survivor Series because so many people are pushing, you know, is this your last Survivor Series? Are you done uh, as far as an active duty wrestler? He wants to retire. But he says, I don't know yet what we're going to do, although I can tell you that I will be at Survivor Series. Who knows? Never say never. But what you can be sure of is that I will be live at Survivor Series because people are thinking that he might have a match, might set up something for Mania. It might be a confrontation or it could just be his farewell. I'm yeah, I, I know to never say never when it comes to I think Vince, and, Vince should blow yeah. him up in a, in a limousine, <laughs> make it finite, you know, really just end the undertaker. Uh, uh-huh. uh, you know, I, I you know genuinely... be funny Jake is if, um, the, we went one night raw started, with the limousine blowing up and then Vince McMahon in a hospital and they're like he's like what happened to the whatever like the the network and the the Thunderdome and all that stuff and they were like oh that was what are you talking about you must have been dreaming and then like they go back to like exactly around that time with the same stage <laughs> and like this was this was all a dream and they retcon the last just, 15 just years just go back and fix everything they retcon there. WWE yeah <laughs> they they fire everybody Get a Benoit lookalike. See, they bring he didn't back. Die, yeah, look, know? he's alive. <laughs> look in the All rafters. Get... It's Owen. Everything's perfect. You know. Just... No, that's too far back. <laughs> that's that's after. But... That's before the limo kill. Hey, hey, hey! We're gonna retcon everything. We're that not just gonna be... go from the limo. We're gonna no, fix it all. That would be really funny. Like just some kind of weird joke like that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't but know. I, what do you think? Do you think the Undertaker is gonna? get physical at survivor series is he going to have some maybe not a match but some you know are we going to see him tombstone or choke slam somebody do you 
I, I kind of picture that will happen. I don't think he'll have a match. I could I could see him laying someone out. You know, some job. I think comes somebody. Out. I think somebody comes out and goes, "This is really how you're going to end your career, saying goodbye at a Survivor Series. Like you're going to just waltz on out of here." I know the Undertaker. And the Undertaker wants to go out fighting. You know what I mean? The Undertaker wants to fight in the ring. I want to. He wants to die in the ring, and I'll be the. And I want to be the one to kill him. Like, and then the guy slaps the Undertaker in the face, and just like fucking like I I I mean I would go that way with like wow you really were gonna let them just you were gonna let Vince just tell you to go home and whatever else you know and this was what's gonna happen that's what the dead man's gonna do he's just gonna go home. Like, like, just tip a cap and go home. You know, I don't know. I could see something like that happening. Yeah, it kind of lines up and makes sense as to what we're seeing. But I don't know. But it, it or like, you know, you, um, you know, I mean, the thing is, if it was Sting, the Sting thing, the Sting works the best because anybody else, you're like Undertaker loses. Like anybody else, like I know it's it's probably not going to be Sting. I don't think it is going to be Sting. But Sting works because it's like. Sting could stand in the middle of the ring with the Undertaker and basically say, "Listen, Taker, you could have your last match against Bray Wyatt. You could have a last match against this guy, that guy. We know what's going to happen. You're going to lose. You don't have it anymore. You know, you know, you don't have it like you used to. I don't have it like I used to. So you get in the ring, one of those guys, whatever. You lose and you go home the way you always wanted to. You knew you'd lose." You know, you, deep down in your heart, you know you're going to lose. You know you would lose the match. You know you wouldn't make it. You know you'd go home, and that's how you want it, isn't it? Buried in the ring, walk away. But, you know, me and you in the ring, it could be my last day. It could be your last day. Maybe it's not your last day. Maybe it's my last day. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, and they're that, just, they're calling it the final farewell. That's what's got me so wrapped up yeah. in this. Like, I know it's a swerve typically that people are expecting, but. They have a, an insert with People Magazine coming out where Undertaker's uh, either on the cover or at least featured. They have a photo shoot. And he's in the kitchen cooking. He's got his wife and daughter there. Uh, this is just back in the beginning of November, the 9th. So mm. he's very candid. He said there are certain days I think about it, you know, being 30 years and how long that is, how long I've been here. There are other days where it seems just like a flash. It came and it went really, really fast. It reminds me to soak things in that I should be soaking in because 30 Did years is a that? lot quicker. Did he write a poem there? Like, what was that? It, it kind of sounds that way, but just uh, a bit of poetic wisdom. It will be fully exclusive tomorrow on newsstands and uh, People Magazine's Man, website. This is so. the most promoted thing I've heard in a while. And people, and you know what's crazy is he makes, he's making headlines. Like he's a wrestler, he's really making headlines everywhere. Like it's yeah. not. This I is mean, like we said, he's on Sports Illustrated, uh, People's Magazine, like just everywhere you can imagine. Even non like People's is not a wrestling. Yeah, or stuff sports that you wouldn't even that you would ever believe would be he'd be on. And they but he's know basically he is. going through saying how, you know, I, I don't want, he's mentioned it before, I don't want to do a cinematic match and my body isn't able to hold up like it used to. And I know that. And it's hard for me to train, hard for me to get into shape. It takes an excessive amount of time for me to be ready. And I know I'm not anywhere near what I was. And I don't want to embarrass myself in front of the fans. You know, that's, that's the long and short of it with him. Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe it will just be his last thing. If it is, people are going to be really disappointed because people won't shut the fuck up about somebody showing up or something happening. Yeah. If it's just. I, I, it'll just forever go on, though. I think people are. Even if he, he fully retires as The Undertaker, now he'll just be in WWE as Mark The Undertaker Calloway. You know, he'll, like, he'll come on, but he'll be not necessarily 100% the dead man. I could see him doing something like that. And yeah, I'd like that. The way he comes out dressed as the man instead and never really is the character again. That's okay. Yeah. With. I and, like and the I idea of that. I could see them retiring the dead man fully because I, I you know, but but fans are just never going to let that go. I, I can picture him, even if he does this in the perfect way and everybody was satisfied, still WrestleMania time is going to come around. We'll be on the road to it and they're going to say, will he, won't he for the end of time? And Vince wants it that way. To, to create speculation and to draw intrigue and interest because he knows that the biggest star he has is The Undertaker. The last real star that he has is The Undertaker. Right, because No can't. one is as big or transcends the world of wrestling as much as Mark Calloway does. Hook, line, and sinker, he's got him. And without The Undertaker there, I mean, think of what, what Taker did for him. He sold out arenas in Saudi. I mean, those oh, yeah. people flocked to see Taker no matter what he did. 
he's he's carried the business for so long and right now he he losing him is is a is a terrible thing that's why Vince made sure to edit him saying he's retiring in the documentary as you know never say never so yeah and the other thing about it is um you know I know that I've I mean I maybe have said this before but you know it's Undertaker's never been like my number one guy like he's the one guy it's always you know of course like Shawn Michaels Stone Cold Hulk Hogan but you know when I was a little kid, uh, Undertaker and Paul Bearer were, were one of my earliest memories. Uh, and I remember going around the schoolyard, dude, pretending to be the Undertaker, getting knocked. We had this fight game. We were all pretending to fight, not wrestling, because the other people didn't like wrestling, but I, I knew what it was. So when I got knocked down, dude, I'd do like the whole Undertaker and I'd stalk the other kids and shit. And it was just, I was seven. I was like seven years old. But it's just like that, dude, I was seven years old. When The Undertaker debuted in 1990, I was fucking seven years old. Like, that's crazy. I was seven. Yeah. Like, or, or six and a half or something. Like, it just, that's... And the guy had a match. Like, we just reviewed a match it not that long ago. It's like, that's crazy. And, and, and also my channel, man. I mean, SummerSlam, yeah, that was a big launching pad for this channel in 2013. But WrestleMania 30... Without that, that loss, was the draw. Yeah. that loss promoted like everybody wanted to go online and hear what people had to say. And there was o- there was almost nobody else doing a live review but me in 2013. There was nobody but like Fred Ricciani and fucking Bruce Blitz and one other guy. And that was it. There was no fucking anybody else doing reviews and nobody else doing live shows, really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just- I mean, like no DQ and guys like that were doing their news and doing their, they were doing shows first, but but nobody was going live. Yeah, and dude, not live feed that, with video. That connection, every time The Undertaker did something at a pay-per-view the next few years, the numbers would blow up in, in the fucking YouTube review. We, on a normal show where nothing really, whatever, we, we you know, we'd see 50,000, we'd see 200,000. But when The Undertaker faced Brock Lesnar the second time and the third, you know, like the, the numbers were just ran, like just boom, booming through the roof. Yeah, because I started to come in then really when Undertaker was fighting Lesnar after the fact, you know, the 2015 times, and you would see the chat uh, and, and YouTube numbers, you know, blow up exponentially anytime Undertaker showed up or uh, there was a pay-per-view before that where he just appeared. It was Seth versus Brock. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. He it. came out at the end. Yeah. And he just, you know, the lights went out as Seth was about to be destroyed by Brock. It was the authorities' punishment to Seth. It was a surprise then, thing. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, Undertaker was just there, and you know, was that the one where he had to like uh, roll from under the ring and a fan yeah. saw him and everything? I I don't know if that was the one. I think so. I think that was. And it. yeah, and then again, yeah, we just the review just blew up. But I remember that being explosive. You know, just because he showed up at the very end, it, it the numbers were incredible. So so I and I, it's great now that he's talking so candidly that other wrestlers and friends of his are openly speaking about him as well because no one wanted to defy or or disrespect the undertaker by talking about the man instead of the character so now hearing about road stories and and people's perceptions and and opinions it's it's quite enlightening sean michaels is talking to cbs sports and he said that uh when undertaker first got there he's dead he doesn't sell it sounded from the locker room standpoint that we all thought he was a limited character it seemed like oh you'd be cool but it would be short-lived and then sean says 30 years later that's uh pretty damn amusing if you ask me (laughs) yeah so he survived 30 years pulling off a gimmick that they thought was very limited and wouldn't last. But Sean also says here to, to cut his you know whole thing short is that he thinks that Mark will be content. Uh, he, he says that, you know, after all this is said and done, he thinks that when he hits the final farewell Sunday, that he'll he'll be content enough to retire at this point. I mean, I hope so. I hope he gets a nice, perfect ending. I don't think we've seen anything perfect so far. I'd like to. I mean, we did a little bit. The if the Roman match was cut in half, and they and they like just they just nailed that. I mean, it would have been such a great ending. Even though I hate I hated Roman, I was like, oh my god, please don't be the guy that retires the Undertaker. I'm gonna flip out. But here's a donation. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. AJ Adams. Bubbly. What's up, brother? Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. He got a call today saying they have footage. I was shot a wet back. I mean grass cutter. I mean it takes while oh. to screw in a light bulb. I all been eating border jumpers. I don't even know if that's the real bird. That might be a fake bird in the count. By the way, you guys fighting with him? That might not really be him. Um, I'll look it up or try to find out. 
might be a fake bird. I could be wrong, though. There's enough fakes, but you never know. There's so many. Um, uh, one, one of the interesting things a cage side seat says, a lot of people have the opinion that Undertaker lost a lot. Oh, Roman, Roman Reigns. Reigns. My bad. You're my man. Oh. I want to see you naked. Give me that Superman punch in my rectum. Two things. One, you should pay $1,000 for Taker to cut a promo on Bullfrog and have him bury him. Two, who in the hell is this Louis Benson guy talking about his time in AU and having bad experiences with Cody and DDP? If I can recall the guy. <laughs> oh my God. Um, Harry Steve, thank you, Harry. Yeah, try to recall it. What's up, Harry Steve? Thank you for the $14. Shit bomb. That's too much money. Hey, what's Joe and Jake? Quick question. <laughs> do you still let people call in? Yeah. What up, Asher? Thanks for the $5 and becoming a $5 shit bomb. Asher, holy shit. Talk about a throwback. And yeah, um, we normally do take calls. So a lot of times we take calls on Discord. And the only thing is you can't hear Jake. But we use Discord now mostly. But not tonight because there was a problem. So we're on Skype right now, which is not ideal to be on Skype, but we're on Skype. So, but yeah, it's 339-226-6610. We'll take the calls a little bit later, probably. Um, I lost my voice a couple of days ago. My voice is fucked. Hey, Joe, I have a couple different wild, unlikely predictions for Undertaker. I think he could either have a confrontation with The Fiend or he could interfere with the 5-on-5 five -five Survivor Series match and confront AJ Styles. Uh, Bird, please DM me on uh, Twitter if that's you, man, so I can rent you. Um, long live the dead man. Different wild, unlikely predictions for Undertaker. Confrontation with the Fiend. Yeah, that seems to be the number one theory. Five on five Survivor Series. Yeah, he could be in the Survivor Series matches. He could lead a team. It's not a bad idea. Hey, Joe and Jake, I want Rest. both of you to answer this. So about five years ago, Undertaker and Brock Lesnar had three matches. Right. One was at W Mania 30. Uh -huh. One was at SummerSlam with the strange false finish. One was in a Hell in a Cell match. Which... Which of the three was your favorite? Uh, rest in peace. What's up, man? Wasn't the, wasn't the favorite, Jake, if I remember, wasn't our favorite match the second one in, I think... With the Undertaker and Lesnar, yeah, with the one where he like sits up and yeah, la that was laughs. the Survivor Series match. Okay, I so I think it's that one that was the best one. Yeah, that was their like rematch, and then they fought again in one match after that. Yeah, the Hell in the Cell match was the Hell the in third the Cell one. match. Yeah, like the Hell in the Cell one wasn't very good, right? But no, it was it was okay. But Lesnar won that one. Undertaker won the. Summer, uh, SummerSlam one, I keep want to say Survivor Series, but he went ahead and did it. Remember, he made Brock pass out, but Brock flipped off the camera as he passed out in that epic fashion. Yeah. And that was after Undertaker tapped, but the ref didn't see it, and he low-blowed him and put him in the uh, Hell's Gate. That was that was a fun match, though. You know, It has, has a lot of memeable moments in it, for sure. Yeah, where he passed out. That was That was a good one, so... Uh, looking back, so, f you know, a lot of people think, oh, Undertaker's going out on his back. He lost a lot, but Cage Size Seats posted this whole article and, uh, he, he ended 2018 with two consecutive defeats, unfortunately. But if you look at it, 2013, the only match he lost then, uh, was the Shield match. And that was a six man tag on Raw, but Daniel Bryan took the pin where he teamed with Kane, Team Hell No at that point. Then 2014, he lost once at WrestleMania to Lesnar. 2015, he lost to Lesnar at Hell in a Cell. He beat Bray Wyatt that year, and he beat Lesnar as well. 2017, <laughs> he was eliminated by Roman Reigns in the Royal Rumble, if you want to count that. Yeah, I thought it was then, SummerSlam where they laughed at each other. Yeah, it was SummerSlam where they laughed at You said Survivor Series. That's why I said afterwards. I said oh, I didn't want to call okay. it Survivor I'm, Series. Yeah, I, I was, keep messing up. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm all lost. I th yeah. thought I was crazy. Nope. 
Uh, I am. But then he lost to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 33. He lost to Triple H in 2018 at the Super Showdown show, which led to the DX match. And then he lost the DX match with Kane. So all in all, oh. he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven losses. It seems like a lot, but that's over the course since 2013. You know, it's almost seven years. He beat AJ. He had the tag team match against uh, Shane that he won, you know, with Drew. That was fun. He beat Rusev. You know, he's had quite a few other matches. He beat Goldberg, even though that was a disaster. He just, he didn't lose as much as people say. So, uh, yeah, the donator went ahead and, and brought up this gentleman that we were going to go ahead and, and this has kind of been the one of the biggest stories, I think, of the day with yep. Louis Benson. Team Louis is his Twitter. And he put out this tweet at around five this evening. I DM'd him it's, a long time ago. No answer. Yeah, I tr- I tried to reach out, nothing back. I know a lot of people have been talking to him, so we'll, we'll see. But uh, this this is a bit of a tricky one. It's it's very hard to paraphrase. This this is a, I read the entire thing. It's twelve pages, very long. Uh, basically, he started working uh, for Comeback Studios, and from Comeback. there they they were working like it was like a third party for AEW. So. He wasn't directly working for AEW, but that was how he got hired into the business. For the record, he looks like this. And I don't, we're going to, I mean, you know, nice beard. Got a good beard there. A little cum catcher on there. So Comeback Studios is owned by DDP. Oh. And uh, so, so this is known as well. He does kind of speak about him in some points as well throughout the 12 pages of his testimony here. So he says in the job, um, it was, it was not told to him directly at first, but later on, uh, when he first started working there, he was viewed apparently as a stalker fan based allegedly, this is all allegedly. So take this all with a grain of salt. This is just his side of things. We don't know Cody's side of things. That's how I want to phrase things beforehand. Yeah. We don't know Cody's side of things. Yeah, and, and some people said, "Oh, well, if it was anybody else, you, you wouldn't wait for their side. You would just." I said, "No, because it's it's all there. There's no proof here. These are all accusations. There's nothing to back this up. So that's why I, I'd like to hear now, something besides testimony." After reading this, I have a trouble. I have a trouble reading, like as you know. I, I I mean, I read, but I don't comprehend very well. So. Maybe I'm wrong, and maybe you have a different idea after reading this, but at, me after reading this came out thinking this guy's a fucking loser. Well, I kind of I, I got the, the idea of that, and we'll, we'll, I'm going to kind of like outline it first, and then we'll go into it. Okay, opinion, you say so. it, you bring it on, and then I'm going to tell you about how he calls people the N-word. Yeah, so that, that comes up later on, too. It <laughs> just keeps on So... Uh, he was told over and over again that if Cody asks, we will fire you because apparently Cody didn't like him and thought he was a stalker fan based on an interaction they had at the All In show. <laughs> He's probably a weirdo. Shows. He's probably a weirdo. Okay. Like, I, I'm just telling you. It's probably I weird. have also read, according to other people on Twitter, we don't know if it's legitimate or not, but people do say that, or people do say that he, he is a bit awkward and, and mm. uh, a very, he, he came across like a very nerdy wrestling fan. Very, mm. like, I don't. I can't find the right name. Very needy. Like houndish, you very know, like needy. oh my god, you remember this? You remember this? What's your favorite match? Like that. Like yeah, very, like very needy. Like I want to kill you. So he said he, from there he was not allowed to talk to any talent, not even friends he made before he started working there, and it led to really awkward interactions right. when he had to like avoid making eye contact with people he considered friends. He never received credit for the work that he did on certain projects because he said Cody only wanted certain people to have credit. And then he said the only reason people were credited was because they were being babies and whining about it. Um, yeah, the text messages come later on. So we're, we're, we're getting to that. Uh, keeping up with the chat. Basically, he says here he was not allowed to post on Facebook or Twitter to ever acknowledge that he worked for AEW in any way, shape, or form because it would look like bragging, even though other people were allowed to do so, he claims. He was forced then later after posting one tweet uh, when he was tagged in a, uh, uh, as credit for one of his jobs, he got tagged in a post on Facebook, and from there, it was on one of the Countdown series. He got labeled a production assistant, and 
when he went ahead and got that, they gave him credit. He made a, a post as well when people had asked, hey, is this you? I saw your name. And the next week he said he found out that Cody screenshotted his tweet and sent it to his boss with a thumbs down emoji. He was then told he had to delete all of his social media or be fired. Right. Okay. So he then your asked his direct is... boss if he had read the tweet because it wasn't supposed to be snarky. It was this guy be... would be this guy would have killed himself if he worked for WWE. Probably. Like, with you think all the this tumultuous is... <laughs> backstage drama that's there? <laughs> it's like this guy go to work for WWE. This guy will slit yeah. his wrists because a lot of this stuff sounds very petty. Some of it sounds, you know, rather serious, but. It sounds like you. The people were just assholes to him. Like I don't. They just I don't sound like that. people didn't like him, and it doesn't even sound necessarily. Like, and he even says he's not sure. He, and he says directly, "I'm not sure Cody was even aware that I had edited anything for the company." He was also saying that he wasn't even sure if if Cody ever knew that he was being treated this way. So I mean, there there is that. But so as we continue, uh, like I said, he's not allowed to post to Twitter. Then he was forced to remove everything that he had posted. Oh my god. Uh, from there, they told him to remove and, and delete his social medias permanently, delete. which caused him a lot of anxiety and stress. He said he also dealt with bullying and harassment while there. He was labeled a stalker fan, which he thought was detrimental against him. Uh, as I said, Cody never said this directly or necessarily knew about the issues. He speaks very highly of QT Marshall. At one point during COVID, he this offered to work from home, and they took it as him basically being lazy. Right. Uh, used three personal days to move. On the first day, he would pack. The second day, he would move. The third Dude, day, he would unpack. Dude, this shit literally happens to me, like has happened to me at a corporate office where once people decided they don't like you, they really all just start kind of ganging up on you and you're just like, That's oh, what it fucking. sounds like. I mean, it sucks as Which a working environment. Which does suck, but, but yeah, it sucks. But, you know, all you can do is shut up and like... Or call it out, dude. I, I always used to call it out. And be How like, much was unwarranted, though? We don't know. How much? Like no one yeah, should be treated it, this way. It I'm also not saying that, it also sounds like people who like sometimes leave me, or like even people who are like you know Joe this and that, and then but I, you never told me that. Like I didn't fucking know that. That happens yeah, all you, the time. To you me. never said there was a problem. You never said there was an issue. So, so when he went to go use those three personal days, that was a big issue because they they basically labeled him as being lazy, or he should you know schedule to to move out over the weekend and only take one day to move his stuff. Mm. Um, when when later his either wife or girlfriend, I have to double check, but his significant other got sick and this guy lazy. Was I, he, does, he, he doesn't look lazy at all. He looks like he's Santa Claus. I mean. <laughs> I don't know what Reminds Cody me of Jack Black, but he said that uh, he he quarantined for ten days, and when he came back, they they said that uh, you know they they forced him to go home, telling him to take another COVID test. And when I got home, they asked me to do a meeting, which was between me, my boss, and two coworkers, you know, stuff like that. So it just it sounds like they sent him home and wanted him to take another COVID test. I don't have a problem with that. On top of it, uh, they had an issue with him requesting the seven days off of work to quarantine. Because he texted them saying, I can work from home, I don't care. And they apparently didn't appreciate them him saying, I don't care. Which I can understand when you tell your boss. I, I know in context how you mean it. Be like, I can work from home, I don't care. But they took it as, I don't give a damn about my work. So again, <laughs> semantics be damned. It sounds, you know, it, it sounds very like he said, she said through all this. And... Uh, no raises without 60 hour work weeks he was told and then at the end before he left uh, he was told to come up with a plan to keep his job and basically prove that he should still be hired there or it was you know he, he would never have a chance to work in the wrestling business again uh, who told him that you know that was his worry uh, if he, but if who he told him that he was here He's saying that if he leaves here, he would he would be feared that he'd never be able to work in the wrestling. So he just again, feared so. it. So he feared it himself. He just yeah, feared it and, himself. And now posting this, he, he's kind of like cementing that. Well, fact. yeah, you've literally made it come to life. Like he can, ends can, it on a note. Can you imagine if every time like Conan or somebody like that left a place, like they just nucleared the whole place? Like I mean, I guess they do in shoot interviews, but they're wrestlers. I don't think people understand when you're not a wrestler, you don't get the same like clout that a wrestler gets a wrestler can go and do a shoot interview and people forgive you you know but if you're just a dude with a camera or an editor or some or even a commentator person or something like that it's like you're kind of like you're not one of the boys like see that's exactly what sorry. i was going to say before too and even with the girls it's the girls being the boys too like it, it, the women wrestlers the men wrestlers all of them they have a right. certain like 
in group mentality. Yes. You know, it's like when you're in the frat or you're on the, the varsity team, that kind of idea. Basically, you need to act like, yes, I'm smart when it comes to video and all this other stuff. I'm going to get it done for you. What's up? But if like, don't start playing wrestling booker guy and all these other things, or you're just going to Yeah, be they don't like, want to hear you fantasy book and talk about mm -hmm. their best matches. And, and listen, you know, at some point, someday, maybe they will. And maybe they'll, yeah, but, they'll but like you. But it wasn't you. a meet and greet scenario. This is a, a work yeah. environment. So I can see why people would get frustrated. Yeah, especially like, say this guy's like, like the editor, right? And then he just goes up to people randomly and is like, so I thought in your match, like, why didn't you guys, like, maybe you could have done this and like all these other things. It's like, all right, dude. Yeah, maybe we could have. I don't know. Who the fuck? What do you care? Yeah. And it's like, like if you brought up something personal, you know, on air and I'd be like, oh, I didn't want you to talk about that. You know, same kind of idea. You want you don't want to make somebody feel uncomfortable at work. And that's kind of, you know, with him having this stalker fan yeah. mentality given to him, I, I I, I'm not defending either side. It's just right. The thing that rubbed me the wrong way was his ending. And I, I you know, All right, this yeah, is very wordy, but he says, I don't want sympathy. This isn't an attempt to bury anyone. I don't want people to turn what against the fuck AEW. is he talking about? Of course, it's an attempt to bury everyone. That's exactly my point. He says, I still watch the show every week and buy the pay-per-views. Mark. Oh, excuse me. I just wanted to stick my just story out sneeze there. Sneeze Mark. No, I just sneeze and I got allergies. It's not like you sneeze Mark. Oh, God, no, just just bad allergies. I'm allergic <laughs> to bullshit. But oh, I wow. just wanted my story out there in case, God forbid, I don't survive COVID-19. Oh, my God. Now I'm not even disgruntled former employee. Now he's going to die of COVID? Like, oh, this was so important. It was but, so important to basically complain about AEW the way, like, thousands and thousands and thousands of other people could complain about their corporate job when you don't get along with people. Like, it was so important to get this out before if he, Casey died of COVID. I'm sorry. that I think that seals it right there. This is retarded. I'm sorry. Like, I'm... Yeah, I mean... <laughs> let me so, get... Wait, we got a video of this guy? Is this really a video? Uh, D. Welsh had sent us one. What is this? Let me read. The, let me let is watch G4 this. G four audition. G four audition. He's going to be a video game guy. He wants Hello, to. Be, I am but professional streamer <laughs> team. Louis, like you said, I, I just can't. Applying. Wait a minute. Let's watch. Let me watch this for a second. You can't right. hear it because Skype sucks. But I'm going to listen to it and tell I'm, you I'm everything. I'm going to pull it up as well. So, um, I just want to. I I want to hear how fucking weird this guy sounds. Because I let's 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 make an assessment. I mean, listen. I know that I have a, a WWE Tough Enough audition, so I'm just as cringy, I guess, right? Whatever. But let's hear what old Neckbeard's going to say about Cody. Or, oh, I'm sorry, this is a G4 audition. I'm sorry. I'm auditioning to be a television host on the television program G4TechTV.com. And I know that when you look for... Oh, this is recent. For a television host, you yeah, are this is looking just for a, somebody who ago. is attractive with experience. Maybe it's time to put somebody on the television that represents the audience. I'm also a great video game reviewer. Wow, is this a joke? This game is good. Oh, this, this game is, is not as good. Oh, yeah, now, it's a joke. Okay, I get it. Out of five. Eats Kevin a lot of Pereira, pasta. More like Kevin Pike. He's got a good voice. Yeah, yeah. Because he Big looks tit. like he eats a lot of pasta. Adam Sessler, more like Adam Sizzler, because he looks he looks like he eats down at the Sizzler a lot. Leo Laporte. Does he still work there? And I have the ability to gain and maintain the attention of the audience. Oh my god, dude, I could roast the hell out of this. He copied my gimmick. You don't record yourself in the shower. That's shower talk. Yeah, this is weird. Uh, I mean, it. this is really, this could really be like, I could really roast this video. I mean, I don't even, I can't even, I don't even know, man. Um, what I mean, listen, he seems like a, a, a good, a so far normal. Maintain the attention of the audience. Oh my God. A, oh, uh, Jesus. Oh, he's in the philosopher Aristotle once said that you should always record video interviews in places that you're not super comfortable. So I chose the shower. <laughs> that tickled my tongue. And whenever we tested in my I knew he had a cat. I fucking really knew he had a father fuck. Did I know he had a fucking cat? That's it. He's a liar. I don't trust I don't trust people that weigh more than 300 pounds and have cats.
Sorry. I don't try. I don't. I just don't. Animal demographic. Uh, and perhaps most importantly, uh, and this isn't a thing that I like to talk I asked them to come on the show tonight. Um, but when I was a kid. Wow. Okay. So this guy like really wants attention. So that's what this is. This guy really wants attention. I mean, I, that's what it is. He's like lost right now and he doesn't know what to do. And so he wants attention. That's what this is. So anyway, he came out with this today and he got buried. Like people went through his old tweets like people. Well, well really quick. He, he didn't get buried initially. Right. Origi At first, he okay. had a huge outpouring of support. He did. Really? A lot of AEW people coming forward and going ahead and, and, you know, I'm so sorry. Cody needs the answer for this. Wait, what AEW people? Uh, people that are usually like big fans. Oh, of Jesse, fans the, of AEW. Okay. So yeah, SJWs. Yeah, okay, fine. Okay, thanks. Jesse, the Buckeye one, you know, you see her. Oh, Jesse, the Buckeye. You know, yeah. I hope she fucking falls down the AEW stairs. <laughs> All the people that you, you typically so see. So wait a minute. In she AW. was, uh, Jess, Jess, the Buckeye was supporting this guy? Yes. Wow, Cody! I hope Cody never gives no you a ticket it was again. This deep, I'm so sorry. I hope you said. never get a ticket again, you fucking cunt! I hope you never get a ticket again, you fucking crybaby, SJW fucking mangled bitch! I hope you never get a ticket. And I see, hope here's you never the thing: get a ticket uh, again. somebody underneath said, "I read all of this. He works for a third company that does jobs for AEW. The only people bullying him are people from this company using the name of Cody." whom has always been nice to him when he saw him. He doesn't have one bad story with someone from AEW, only from his company. Exactly. And that's the thing. He even says, I got to find exactly where. In here, he's like, oh, uh, finally. Why is Cody uh, the focal point of this whole thing then? That Well, that's, that's what I was going to get into because he kept saying that if Cody asks, we'll fire you, his boss said. Apparently, that's DDP or someone else in the top. He alludes to it being DDP a few times in here. But he says that I finally, in February, Cody made positive remarks to my face, saying that I had gone through hell and pushed through and I was the man now, going as far to say I like Louie. And uh, it was only 45 seconds of interaction over the past eight months. I didn't know if it was an attempt to apologize for how I was treated. I didn't even know if he knows how I was treated. He never actually said sorry, but at least I felt like it was a monkey off my back. So all he says is every time he runs into Cody, Cody was, was nice to him, polite, quick, but not dismissive. This is just stupid. It's like, just, what the well, fuck what is so this? It, it, it originally gets a ton of support. Like I said, Jess is saying, my heart breaks for you. I had no idea it was this, it was this bad. I'm sorry, this deep. I'm so sorry. What's he talking about? What's this bad? A lot of people said, I, I'm disappointed in Cody Rhodes. Uh, Why? Lot, what did he do? You know, what the fuck did Cody do? Like that's uh, what the fuck Cody Cody just seems to be the one blamed for all the wrongdoings that happened in this company. Like Cody was the catalyst to him being bro attacked I, or uh, however Cody I, came on this show and like I'm a super fucking small YouTubing wrestling guy, clearly a wrestling fan. Yeah, I've done some stuff in the business, but he doesn't know anything about anything and the guy was a sweetheart. I mean, like, he might be a dick to some people. I don't know. Maybe he is. He was a dick to Russo, but uh, I, I, don't, I don't, like, I'm just, I, I what's the maybe, fucking proof here? This is just a guess. I don't know, but it sounds like maybe Cody said to somebody like, oh, that guy is a little weird or, you know, but he was always nice to him. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or he came off as like kind of stalkerish or, you know, because it, he originally, it all starts off from the very time I started with AEW by way of Comeback Studios. So he's not even working for AEW. He does note that. But shortly after I was hired, I was told that Cody, the EVP, didn't like me and thought I was a stalker fan. Uh. So maybe something happened at All In that rubbed Cody the wrong way. And Cody, never Dude. rude to this guy's face, would probably never be rude Can to I this guy's face. Can I explain this? I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you what fucking happened. This guy was a weirdo at, at, or, or, or whatever. He was awkward. Let's let's give him a break. He was awkward, which I could be awkward. He was awkward at All Out the, or the, the signing at All In or whatever. All Out or All Up Your Asshole, whatever the fuck it was. He was awkward and weird. Cody probably is aware of him because he's so up your ass, right? Sending messages. Hey, Cody, you know, hey, da, 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 da. And now you see him in person and you're like, oh, my God, this guy, he always fucking hits me up about this. 
yo man what's up okay cool like yeah man thanks for coming man like it's really cool hey cody maybe i could blah, 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 blah. like yeah no you know this i'm busy but you know that's cool man like i appreciate you coming out all right blah, blah, fucking yeah, i gotta go uh cody's like yeah that fucking guy like is always hitting me up and always messaging me blah blah blah, blah. oh um so maybe oh, maybe the oh, people oh at, DDP or whoever's company, yeah they who, felt like we oh don't you lose hired this, that this guy job. that guy's working for you that guy's cutting our video, yeah like oh, yeah man I got this guy his name's Louis blah 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 oh man what the fuck dude that's the guy that like always hits me up and uh, always stalking shit he's a fucking weirdo are you sure like like and then the guy's like oh yeah man I mean I can get somebody else if you want well no nah, man just you know just be careful he's like he's just he's just always crazy he's always up my ass I'll Twitter and oh my yep. god I'll do this wrestling thing oh okay yeah well man listen he's just doing he's a good guy at the video you know okay cool later listen Louie just fucking edit the video, you know, if, you know, but you know, I mean, so now there's this weirdness and it really doesn't come. It doesn't it come from like a bad right. place. And they said, don't talk to the talent with AEW. Right. They just kind of made like a flat out rule. And, and he's, and he's, he's butthurt really, about it. Cause he wants to talk to talent and shit. Exactly. And he sounds really focal on the point that I didn't get credit. And when I did, I posted yep. this one social media, you know, Thing, and it was so lighthearted and very thankful. And then they made me delete my socials. Yeah, yo, well, Cody, did you like the video I edited? Times. Did you like the video I edited, Cody? You didn't say anything. Did you see it? Yo, did you like what I did with this? You like what? Oh my God! Shut the fuck up. Just be an I editor. Mean, we don't fully know that's the case, but it seems right. that way. And, but but I know if if you told me, all right, don't post my address, and I post your address, obviously, you know, I'm not going to be working for you anymore. They told him, do not post anything that about AEW in your socials. And he's like, well, other people did it. Well, I don't care what other people did. We told you not to do it. You did it. So if you want to work here, you need to delete your social media. Now, I don't know if that's legal. I don't know if they, they really can force you to do that. I'm not sure. I don't know the, the precedent there and the standings for it. But right. he didn't put up too much of a fight, and he admits that. He just went along with it. What's, like, Co what's Cody Rhodes' Twitter? Can, can you tell me Cody Rhodes' Twitter? Uh, it's just at Cody Rhodes. At Cody Rhodes. No underscores. And no underscore, just at Cody Rhodes. He hasn't written or replied or anything. Last thing he posted was five hours ago responding to AEW's update about Brandy. So, okay, let's go take a look at something. I just want to take a look. So, so when so he get he gets hired what a year ago, or he's been working for DDP and all these other people, and they get contracted by AEW and Cody to do all these things. Cody is aware of this guy. For whatever reason, Cody's aware of him, and Cody's like, oh, my God, that's the guy who, Jesus, he won't, whatever. Okay, let's take a look at his tweets to Cody right now. We're, we're doing this live. I don't even know what's Seems going like on. Seems like he's been there for a while, like he's been working there for quite a bit because it's this is, since. This is February 2019. Yeah, he's been working there so, before. All but let me explain. Before. This is the last time. This is These are the last tweets to Cody uh, that he tweeted involving Cody Rhodes. It starts, the first one is in February 2019. That lines up with when he started working for them or being told, like, don't fucking interact with people on Twitter. So February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Ten months. Ten months of silence with Cody. Seems kind of weird. Okay, let's go down. He says, so that's why Steve didn't answer the call, uh, answer when I called him. So Cody is tweeting a personal video here, and then Louis is saying that's why he didn't answer when I called him. Uh, now does oh this is a good question. Does Cody who responds to this? Hold on a minute. Let me find out. Let me find out who liked that comment. If I can find it out, I want to find out who liked that comment. Um, in, yeah, and uh, like I said, so if if you tell your employees whatever you can't do something, they do it. And then there's repercussions. I, I can't, even if it's not fair, then if it wasn't fair, then don't take the job. Don't, you know, like stand up for yourself or uh, make a complaint, do something formal about it. Oh, I, I don't gotta, think they have the right to tell you that you need to delete your socials. So, but they do have the right to fire you for posting things they told you you can't that involve work. Like social media is, right. a, is a very big tool used by uh, people that, you know, hire people for jobs now. Anytime you apply, they go through your social media. Right. Um, so that's a very common. The like came from somebody named Nathan, so it didn't come from Cody. So this is a super like personal tweet that only like the people in the car and shit should really know about. And so even in this thing, he bring he name drops a guy. 
So like that's jo- why July Steve- 23rd, Joe, he tweets to Cody. He says, what are the odds we can get some kind of Cody barbecue at StarCast 18? Because your meat sounds delicious and I want it in my mouth. Okay, yeah. See, so he's tweeting weird shit. By the way, this is not much different than me. I, yeah. t- I tweeted the Young Bucks, I'm gay for you and stuff like that. Remember that? And they responded. Yeah. Remember Matt Jackson was like, what the fuck, bro? Exactly. And, uh, but, and, but there's, and a, but there's responds, a difference. He says that, that came out wrong or did it, question mark. You know, he's trying to be funny. but Right, which is, you know, so I'm, just, all these I'm just calling myself out for being weird. Like, I was saying yeah. stuff about, oh, let's be gay with the Young Bucks. You know, but, but I didn't go up to them and act that same way in person. That's the difference. I'm sitting here at Joe Cronin show. You can go look me up and be like, this guy's a weird fucking YouTuber guy. You know, but this guy was coming up to them with shit, too. So they were like, dude, what the fuck? And I don't think they're into that type of deal. Uh, maybe that's why I don't work for AW. Maybe that's why I fucking, maybe they looked at me and was like, this guy's a fucking weirdo. The Young Bucks look, maybe they think I'm a weirdo. But I understand why, so it makes sense. But this guy fucking is weird, too. This is weird. Like, like you said, wow, today, oh, my God, well, dang, I wish I came to the show. I would go through all of the storylines with Fact Daniels. Like, this is him talking about storylines and all these things. I have to ask, is the librarian auditions over? Like, blah, blah, blah. Um, Because I was filming mine tomorrow. See, so he's like, he's trying to be the librarian. He's trying to fucking be in G4. He's trying to be here, there, everywhere. And by the way, I filmed my librarian thing. And how many times do we harass AEW about my librarian audition? So for all we know, they think the same thing of Joe Cronin that they think of Louis Benson. Like, fucking Joe Cronin's a weird fuck. Fine, I understand, but at least, like, I have a show about it with comedy with 68,000 subscribers. I'm not just some random person doing it. It's for my show that I'm doing it. If I get fucking excommunicated from a company, I don't fucking whatever the fuck. I mean, it sucks because I wanted to do something with them, but I'm not up their ass every two seconds. But maybe I am because I'm always like, oh, commentary. What's up, commentary? So maybe now they're like, Joe Cronin's a fucking weirdo, too. So, like, if you hired me to do something with the company... They're like, oh, my God, that guy that's been begging for a job on commentary, Joe Cronin, for a year, like, tweeting weird shit. Like, that guy is now working as a security guard in our building for our company even because we we hire a, a contract out a, a security job. Yeah. A- and I could see somebody from the security company, like Cody, being like, listen, that guy fucking, he would write us about sucking our dicks and stuff. And, like, he, it's weird that he works in your company now. That would make the security manager go, oh, shit, really? And then go up to the guy and be like, listen, dude, what are you doing? And then the guy's like, well, nothing. I just, like, I was just, I'd tweet them, but it was just jokes and shit. I'm I'm a security guard. Okay, bro, but listen, just fucking don't be fucking going up to the wrestlers and trying to book shit and trying to talk that your job is security. So yeah. don't be fucking and, retarded. And, like, and, and then you're like, oh, they were fucking weird. mean to me. Yeah, it doesn't discredit him entirely. You know, like, we're not saying that either. Things could be valid, but. Yeah. It's not looking great. I mean, perception is a huge key of this. And you see tweets from him. And and granted, you and I are against canceling people and dragging up old stuff. But we don't know if this plays into anything that he's still doing today. So he sent out an apology. But he said, you know, Prez Hilton, uh, this is from 2012. Yeah, they they dug up the dirt on this guy. Yeah, Prez Hilton was guest ring announcer for the Divas match and is a huge N-word, F-word, apparently. So, I mean, like... Yeah, yeah, just can't win. And I just want to go on record saying I've said worse. Absolutely, so have I. I was so, talking about Rusev last night. I get it. It's just the no, no. Of, I mean, like I, I mean, come on. But I'm just saying. I know, but we, we, this is why we, you never know what people are going to dig up on you. But but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I I, I believe that he is a attention starved, creative, somewhat somehow talented guy who's attention starved. And he's awkward, and he just doesn't know what to do. And that, and I think he's probably a little stalkerish, but I think it's—I don't think he's a full stalker. It sounds like, but he is a no. little like he's a little persistent and annoying, and he—he—he he, he has talent, and he wants to tell everybody, and he just doesn't know what to do. So he's just fucking saying shit he's looking for attention all the time that's what it is listen i'm like he even that says too. in his bio tweets may contain absurd or awkward humor and he, he brings note to that later he said i'm deeply sorry for the language i've used in the past all i can do is apologize reflect and attempt to grow from it by the way if to, to, not to defend him but n-word f-word 
was a big like meme thing in 2012. Not that Huge you should, thing. not that you should be saying it. You know, obviously, no, but but that was the, that was like when the guy was saying that was the shock thing to say. Like, what wasn't it? Like, what's his face that was saying? I dubs made it. I dubs, yeah, like close a little after that time, a yeah. little bit after it. Yeah, it was a big stupid meme. I mean, like, but I get it. It's like that's fucked up. And but he's saying if you think the tweets of a teenager invalidate the experience of an adult, I'm sorry. Right. And he says people pulling up my old tweets, fair play. I I you know, and then he says about the. Co- Cody meat joke. He said, I purposely make cringy jokes. It's in my book. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, like the guy in the chat brings up a good point. He should have known better at 21. You're right. But it's like, I'm just saying, I don't think the guy's a Nazi. He's not a Nazi. I don't think, I don't think he's a racist, a crazy racist Nazi. He's just fucking, he's making bad jokes or saying fucked up racist jokes. Um, I've said racist jokes. Um, Some of them were funny to a lot of people maybe one or two one or two was horrific like why i've said one or two that were really bad that were like they weren't funny like and they they had the bad words in them and they weren't funny like it was like not good it was bad um how old is he now i don't Do know, know how old he is 30 saying, something you know, he was 21 then He's saying teenager. That's why I don't know how old he is. I don't. Have I can't any tell blame. how old he is. I just know he's attention starved. Obviously, I and think then, this is a bunch of nothing, and I think this is like the salty. Um, this is when people like flip on me and they start making videos or saying, "I'm just going to tell everybody," you know. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I mean, I'm just guessing. I don't know 100. percent I asked him to come on the show. I asked him and Cody to come on the show. I asked them once. Oh, he also says that when Cody used to come in the office, they would either have him, you know, not be there or have to stay in the back so he wouldn't be around. He didn't they didn't want, you know, him yeah. to see Cody or anybody. Why what does he do again? He's the editor? Yeah, he was editing videos and doing video creation. So now he did post a couple of screenshots. So they were so maybe they were text were they protecting his job? Like Cody thinks you're a stalker. Let's not you know, don't go in don't It sounded like more like, Oh, he's just an inconvenience, let's hide you in the back. That's how he made it sound. But we don't know the parameters for what was being done. So Steve Yu texts him and Ugh. says, Louie, take down your Twitter post. Cody messaged me about it and just think how busy he is today. Not good. Then Louie says, it's gone. Sorry, Steve. Sincerely, when I saw other people tagging me on Twitter because they saw my name in the credits and that you tagged me on Facebook, I assumed it was okay, he says. And then Steve replies, it's bad when Cody brings it up the day of the pay-per-view. No time to discuss today. That's all that tweets or text message says. Another one says, FYI, Cody is coming in today. We may need to move you to the other office from 1.30 to 3. He says, okay, if you want, I can just stay out until then because I think Garrett needed that office at that time. They say, okay. And he says, would you prefer that? I can do whatever you'd like. And this is all one, so gay. What, yeah, like, really you, like, listen, first of all, if they really moved this guy out of the room because Cody was coming in, what kind of fairy fucks are they? Like, well, I mean, I'm, I mean, whoever times, they according are. According to the text messages, once I on mean, like, 17th, once on July 9th. I mean, but uh, why? I don't know what. See, we don't know because we haven't heard from Cody. We haven't heard from this guy. I don't know. We need to get one of them on the show. Cody, are you listening? Fucking uh, Louie, are you listening? Anybody like wants to call in or tell me, email me, Joe Cronin Show, Yahoo.com, DM me on Twitter. I would love to figure out because like usually the truth is in the middle. It's yeah. probably his boss being overprotective because he heard Cody bashing him or, or saying stuff. And so he's like, oh, my God, I better get him out. Of, like better. I, I, I don't want Cody to get mad at me having this guy around. Uh, you know, so I don't know. The truth is in the middle or you or, but or, is Cody uh, stuttering John. Um, or is he uh, is he actually annoyed by this guy? Like, in re- like actually annoyed saying, like... Because I, I picture Cody to be pretty cool. Like, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. We could be wrong. P- some people are a real piece of shit and we don't know about. But, I mean, when I talked to Cody, you know, I, I gave him a little markness. I gave Cody Rhodes a little bit of a markness. After our interview, I said, hey, Cody, man, listen, I've been watching. I've been doing this, da da da, da. Here's what I do. Uh, appreciate everything, blah, blah, blah. But Fuck. think about the scenario and the setting. It called for that. Right. I suppose he, he you're right. He was coming on. This guy's tweeting him like weird shit. Wrestling. Yeah. And, and he, Cody's he probably. At Cody's office where he's EVP, not the wrestler. 
They no, want, it's, it's oh, a different setting entirely in scenario. Yeah, jo so. Josh Beast says they wanted to take credit for his work. That's why they had him hide from Cody. That could be that could be it. They do stuff like that, but they didn't. And they said that, but they know, credited him. Credit he wasn't. And then later on, he finally got credit, and that's when he tagged himself. Oh, so you so, think? That, so you think the big thing is? So really, his bosses wanted to take credit. It sounds like his work themselves were very shitty. It sounds like the actual yeah. company he worked for, right. Comeback Studios, sounds like not a great place to be at. Right. And uh, this is corroborated corroborated by Louis Benson's old boss. Wow. He chimed in on Twitter and said, I have heard the play-by-play -play for all of this. It's very wild and a story of poor management double standards and the attempted character assassination of a low-level employee for no reason right even the tech side of the business can be like a carny show he said wow. every time i'd hear a new detail i'd be blown away a toxic environment can easily just come from one guy with too much influence so it sounds like he's blaming cody there that's how i take it but it, it to me this all sounds like the actual, mm. you know, comeback studios is a bad place and AEW is getting the rap for it. Because I haven't heard any. He said how QT is great. Anytime he worked with QT, right. he had relationships and friendships with other wrestlers and other staff with AEW. So the only thing that we see evidence of is his boss for the actual comeback studio saying to delete stuff, saying to get in another room or not be present when Cody's there and saying to not, you know, to, to remove your social media. And if those screenshots are legitimate, you know, we don't know for sure, but taking it as face value, it just looks like the company he worked for sucked and they kind of blamed Cody as a scapegoat for as to why they could treat him like shit. So maybe they didn't like him in this company. He got treated like shit and it was easier to blame Cody saying, oh, he's a Mark, he's a wrestling fan, just like, you know, you and I are. And if we say that Cody doesn't like you, obviously he's going to listen and we can get him out of our hair. Maybe it's DDP. I don't know. It could be. Steve, you, DDP, wow. uh, you know, whoever it is, it, it's, it's, but it doesn't sound, I, I don't I feel bad. I don't want the guy to have a horrible, you know, work yeah. situation that follows him and, and now this haunts him. And now, now they like dig the up, it was framed now they dig up the Cody. racial stuff. Now, now if he ever tries to work anywhere, they're going to be like, oh, he's, oh, he's a racist. Or, yeah. He's going to have to fight with that. And as you said, the internet was so different in the t early 2010s, you know, it was, it was, it was. Memes I mean, he actually only said it once. I was surprised. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, so, like, there's not a pattern. But, uh, yeah, I mean. But that's how it's being labeled and, and looked at. Yeah. So, send, send his I, greasy I, ass in outer space. Let's play a donation. Here it comes. Here we go. Are you ready for this, Louis Money, you motherfucker? Drew slobs knobs for cheese sticks. Take that, Drew, you fucking cocksucking cheese fucker. Fuck you, Drew. Fuck your asshole out, Drew. Uh, thank you for the $11.50. Lewis Money. Thank you, dude. I scream so loud I think I pissed the dog off upstairs. <laughs> that or someone's breaking in to kill me. I hope they're killing me, though. Please yeah, I just don't life. like the, the way people are labeling this as like text message provided as evidence and claims of mistreatment while working with AEW because he wasn't working for AEW. Yeah, he was. He was I a, thought he was working for AEW too, the way it was yeah. littered. And I was, was like, oh, that, oh that a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. A little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Welsh, you my boy, but until you stop letting the 250 pound hooker tramp a man war sit on your face for $20 and a blow job, the chat will not respect any handicapped check getting ass. I mean, uh, I appreciate it, AJ Adams. Uh, go after D. Welsh, man. How about you and D. Welsh in a Mongoloid match? How about that? We'll see who wins that one. AJ Adams, good to hear from you, AJ Adams. Keep it savage, brother. Keep it savage, dude. Love you. And I'm not going to speak for you, but, you know. Party. This guy's going to end up killing himself. This guy's going <laughs> to end up killing himself. I hope he does with a Cody Rhodes t-shirt on, too. How about that? And the weight belt. Just fucking 
just dead with a fucking with a Cody Rhodes sweatshirt on. <laughs> Gotta Listen, have the belt too. what's his name? Fucking don't kill yourself over this. Louis. Uh, Louis. Louis, don't kill yourself, bro. A lot of people that know you're you're just a fucking obsessed dork who knows how to make videos. All right. Don't kill yourself, Louie. It's not worth it. You know, maybe Cody will, after a week, will be like, you know, I feel bad for this fucking idiot. Let's just hire him as a fucking editor. Like, let's hire him, at, you know, and then, and Cody will, like, do it, like, agree yeah, to... Yeah, good guy Cody. Yeah, yeah maybe he'll good guy Cody will... The day. He'll be like, you know what, I don't want this fat fucking mongoloid to <laughs> do- kill himself. And I'm not saying Joe... And then I that to be on us. Either. He's not the golden boy. You know, I'm not saying Cody can do no wrong and he's got no faults. I'm sure he could be a dick like everybody else. He's been else. a dick to fucking Vince Russo, who I didn't really think did anything really that yeah, long. Yeah, I mean, we, we've, we've, we've seen But, it, I mean, but I've just, I, I, I've met Cody and he was a sweetheart. That's all I know. He gave me fucking tickets and shit. He was like, yo, you're fucking cool. I like you guys. Hey, you're yeah. going to be at, you're going to be in Boston. Like, oh, cool, man. What the fuck? Cool shit. It just guys feels like nice. an sweet attempt against a W when that shouldn't be the case. It right. should be his actual I think, you know I think we're gonna find out more in the next coming days. Someone's gonna I, make a co- I hope you know, so. hopefully a statement. Comeback studio sounds like a shitty place to work. It sounds like he's telling the truth, but it's his truth. Yeah. Like I said, there's two sides to every story, and I'm sure he was treated like shit and we don't know if yeah. and, and you know, amount of what was his fault or his doing or even, you know, he could be not at fault oh my still God. inspired them to treat him like crap. I can't believe this, Jake. He just tweeted out a song and he's he's got a knife and a T-shirt and he's and he's tweeted out a song, another another video by Louie. Let me go listen to this. Oh, oh my God. I just bought a gun and I did it out. I'm gonna blow my brains out with my gun. Shoot myself in the head. I've lost control. Watch me die. Watch me die, Cody Rhodes. It's your fault. And my brother said, when I was younger, my life was gonna suck. I'll blow my brains out, I'll blow my brains out Because of Cody I'll blow my brains out, I'll fucking kill myself Because I'm racist now I'll kill myself I'll put a gun against my brain I wanna die and it's the end I'll kill myself now Wow, Cody, I mean, that is... Wow, I mean, that's not good That He tweeted that out Cody, you got to reach out to this guy. Cody, I'm not saying it's your fault. For all we know, it's DDP or one of these other people or, or Drama Studios or whatever this company is he worked for. Um, it, it's not AEW, Cody, uh, but but this may rest on your shoulders despite you didn't do anything. Even though I think Cody Rhodes didn't do anything wrong, I think, Cody, you're going to have to reach out to this guy. This is scary. And I mean now. It's one in the morning, but this is not good. This is scary. I am actually kind of scared right now for this guy. Please. Somebody tweeted out before saying, I've known Louie for years. He was always an odd fella, but never in a harmful kind of way. Always in a damn, let me be nice to you kind of way. And also he was working with DDP, and I really wanted him to get me a signed copy of Ready to Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had- says, then the person tweeted, do you think I can get my copy? Oh God! <laughs> Listen, I, I I don't think that's gonna happen. We had now. DDP on the show six years ago. What's up, DDP? Where you been? Uh, six. Wow, it's taken six years, and I still haven't gotten DDP back. DDP must have came on the show and been like, "Eh, see you next time." He oh, got busy. Uh, he got busy. Let me. Speaking of getting busy, let's get busy with a dono. Kingston, you want some of Boston? My Paisans, Joe and Jake. 
I want to invite you Joey's Pizzeria for a good pizza pie and my Ooh. mama make great spaghetti and meatball. One person who ain't invited it's that fucking fat gook bullfrog. Oh He'll my cut God. your fucking tongue out you fat mooly fucker. Oh my good Christ, Vinny Mamatelli. <laughs> hey, you oh, paisan. I kill you, Vinny Marcellia. What up in the ring of honor, you fucking paisan fuck? Vinny Mamatelli. <laughs> Thanks for Ocho. Ocho coming in. I can't wait till it's hockey season again. I want the Boston Bruins bear to bite and eat off the dick of Gritty uh, this NHL hockey season. He's actually done. DDP Yoga has a transitional VDP. Oh, really? It's Brandon. Is that short for Brandon? I've seen you in the chat last few nights. I feel like uh, you're newer. Uh, BRNDN or whatever. Did you change your name, Brandon? Brandon? Brandon. Um. Yeah, I, I, listen, I would love to, you know, criticize somebody for their racial humor, but unfortunately, like, I would be a hypocrite, so, but I don't think the guy is, I hope, I, I hope the guy's not really racist, I'm sure he's not, I think he's just he an idiot. He doesn't seem that way, it seems like he was just trying just to be being stupid. awkwardly funny. Yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm work. gonna be shocking by being racist, and it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out really for anybody when you do it, usually. Uh, but the mindset at that point, you weren't being racist saying that, you were being humorous, you know, it was now, if you say the N word, you're like, oh, you know, it, you know what the weight it carries. But at that point, it was just kind of a, you know, something globally no, Jake, accepted. No, Jake, you're always racist when you say that word. Well, hey, what are you going to do? Can't win them all. Speaking of winning them all, AEW. You they can. They won by a shit. All right, go ahead. Depends on how big your tree is. So AEW got 850,000 viewers last night. They beat the snot out of WWE which only brought in 638,000 viewers, which is very surprising. Oh, wait a minute. Give me the numbers again. Here we go. AEW NXT numbers. Are you ready, guys? Write it down. Get your dicks out. Get your dildos out. If your wife has a dildo, go grab it and start going like this. Ah, because here comes the ratings. Let's go. Jake with the... Wait a minute, Jake. Wait a minute. We need a theme. We need an What intro. if your wife doesn't have a dildo, but you do? Is that no, what? no, no, no. I, I got both. I got, we, we, we if I can have a sword battle with ours. All right. Okay. Wait, ready? Right. Hold on. Let me give you the intro. Here comes the intro. You won't be able to hear it, but here comes the intro for Jake. Ladies and gentlemen, here it comes. <laughs> The AEW and NXT ratings are here by Jake DeMarco. Louis right. Fatfuck. I'm sorry. He killed himself. All right, now you can go. AEW pulled in 850,000 viewers. Whoa. That's right, 850 with a .37 in the demo. Whoa. So that is a big increase as well. The demo yeah. god did it again, baby. Woo. Week before, they were only at 764, so that's Holy almost a 100,000 viewer increase. Take that, Triple H. And that's over 200,000 higher than NXT. Take that, NXT Triple H. NXT had 638, so. You got that game? Are you the game now? Huh? And their demographic was a point one four, So, I mean, they've been hitting a point two at times. That That's a great drop. They didn't even place in the top 50. I guess, WWE, you should have picked Joe Cronin on Tough Enough. The game, uh, Triple H. Uh, Dynamite uh. was in seventh, Joe. What was NXT that? NXT was in 56th. Oh, my Christ. NXT. I mean, that's, that's how Dynamite beat the crap out of NXT in, in well, every and, way and, possible. And to be honest, NXT had a good show, too, so that's They had bad. a great show. That's why I was so surprised. Mm. It, it was a excellent show that women's match at the end especially and then everything they did to set up you know mcafee's team versus you know undisputed era was excellent mm. so it really was just a hell of a show all the way through aew was really good as well so you know big right. night for both sides uh raw and smackdown will continue with the thunderdome but they're moving wwe public relations were the first one to confirm that breaking news they're bringing the thunderdome to tampa bay that's right. They're Tampa gonna head over Bay. to Tampa Bay. So We're they're going, going to, to Tampa Tropicana Bay. Field. We're going to Tampa. They're going to Tropicana. We Field. always go to Tampa. And they will start that Friday, December eleventh on Fox. So that will be the first time that they're over there. Still makes me wonder if they're gonna bring war games out of the performance center, the CWC, since they'll have two rings side by side see that fitting in the performance center. And they can go ahead from there, and you know, if they if they add it to the Thunderdome, I'm sure that would. Be ladies and gentlemen, we have a caller, and I was able to add him. I can't believe that hasn't worked on Skype in forever. But ladies and gentlemen, seven six nine, hello. 
Hey, Joe Corona, what's going on? What's going on, baby? I wanted to ask you a question. If yeah. you was in WWE or AEW as a wrestler, what would be your gimmick? What would be my gimmick? Mm, I think I would sort of be like... This I would literally just be real. I'd be like, dude, my shit is going to be that I'm real as fuck. That's what my shit's going to be. I'm going to call people out for everything. I'm going to be real as fuck. Vince, give me say, the microphone. I would be an Eddie Kingston type. I would be like an Eddie Kingston, but I'd be like a sniveling shithead. Like, I'd be like, I, you know, I'm not as tough maybe or something. But I would be real. I'd be like, Vince, give me the mic. Let me have rock promo power and, like, let's fucking make money. Let's do this. You know, uh, give me the words I can't say. Give me the things we're worried about. Let's do the bullet points. Give me some of the things and let's roll, dude. Let's say stuff that's going to make people tune in every week. And that's what I'm going to do. So I, my, my gimmick would be I'm going to be real as fuck without the fuck because you can't say that on WWE. Okay. Would you be heel or face? I'd probably be a heel to start. No doubt about it. Absolutely. How could you but not the, be I'd, but I'd, I'd just be burying people. So, like, it would be crazy. Like, I'd just bury faces. You know, so Eventually like, be a heel that gets cheered. I'd probably end up being a face because there's no faces that would be good enough that would, like, people would end up being like, you're right, this guy. Or I'd be wicked annoying or so a fucking asshole that, like, you would want to see me die. So maybe I'd put over the face. I don't know. But either way, I'd try heel first. And I'd be real as fuck. I'd just shred people. I'd be like, yo, Apollo Crews, what's up, man? What have you done in this company? You're like, Mr. Fucking, I don't know how to talk. Apollo Crews, you know what I mean? Like, what's your gimmick to, like, that you're, like, from Georgia? Like, what the what is your gimmick, bro? Like, do you have muscles? Dude, I'm smarter than you, and I can knock you out with a kick to the head. I don't care your pecs are this big, your muscles are that big. You're boring on TV. The ratings go down when you get in the ring, okay? The ratings go down, and you're going to go down when I kick you in the head and take your stupid United States title. When a white guy, five foot nine, knocks you out after all your little muscles and your vitamins and your little say your prayers or whatever you watched Hulk Hogan when you were little, and you're laying on the, on the canvas staring up at the sky, and some smart smaller man than you knocks you out you know what you're gonna do you're gonna get up you're gonna think to yourself that you can't believe it but you're gonna get up and you know what you're gonna do you're gonna smile into that camera because that's all you do win or lose you smile away just happy to be there apollo lose you suck i'm gonna bury you in this company send you back to nxt you're gonna suck there and then you're gonna go to mlw or somewhere else where nobody will ever know who you are that's what i'm gonna do and you're never gonna forget the name joe freaking cronin that's what's gonna happen to you apollo lose there you go caller that's what i'd do if i was in wwe yeah baby see now we got aw calling just to go ahead and thank you they want to get creative ideas yeah, I Jacob's would, right. I would They're freak. calling for creative ideas. Yeah, yo, bro. Hey, bro. What's up? What's the fucking? What, what am I gonna take on next? The guy who's stoned every week. The guy who's who's on the fancy herb every week. Yo, tell me some more. Oh, you would rather go in the back and get weird than get out here in the ring and actually focus on a match. You would probably be the next Hulk Hogan or Rocky Maivia if you actually focused on wrestling in the ring and you weren't like. Hey, bro. You're like a, you're like the Undertaker. If the Undertaker was missing chromosomes, dude, you fight. That's why you wrestle without shoes on. Go ahead and step in the ring with me. I'm gonna step on your feet the entire match. I'm gonna step on your toes. It's not illegal to do it. I didn't know if you know or not, but it's not illegal. You better knock me out, bro. Otherwise, I'm gonna break your toes the first time I step in the ring with you. I'll break your toes, and then you're gonna be in a hospital bed going like, oh, bro. And you're gonna be and you're gonna be pissed because they don't they don't let you smoke the funny stuff there. All right, you ugly nippled idiot. Uh, all right, so there you go. That's what would happen if I was in WWE. That's what would happen. <laughs> um, but at least he's got some charisma. Thanks, caller. Hey, it works. That's not. I mean, like we would get past the censors with that somehow. I know we still so. got to get the Survivor Series as promised, but I've got a few quick little stories. Uh, SAG went ahead. The Screen Actors Guild tweeted out that they had a powerful conversation with Thea Trinidad, a.k.a. Zelina Vega, today. This was on Wednesday. But by they powerful, said, we support they were... her and others as they work to protect and empower themselves. Wow. Look out. So something's coming. We don't know what yet, but, I mean, something's in the work. But Eric, Eric Bischoff is absolutely correct. He said, you know, a union is not the silver bullet cure that everybody thinks it's going to be. There's no statue of limitations on back taxes, he says here. Can you imagine the fines and penalties that could exist if independent contractor status of WWE is challenged or changed? 
because they can go back 20, 30 years based on the amount of talent fees that they paid out, and then they would have to pay taxes on all of those. So that's possible as to why WWE is so against this as well. But there comes with it civil litigation, and you know he said unionization always sounds great, but it's not the silver bullet that cures all evils. So he said it can uh, come back and put talent at a much greater disadvantage. Yeah. So something needs to change, but a union may not be the exact answer. So hopefully they can figure out something that works well for everybody. Yeah, I don't think the wrestlers, you know, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, a union would be kind of good in those ways, but there's also a lot of bad things. Then it's like, what if everybody strikes? Then you got to strike? Yeah. And you're like, I don't want to strike. And what if you don't, if, if, if there's changes that happen in the union that you don't agree with, well, guess what? Too bad. You know, if yeah. it gets voted into action and it happens and you don't care for it, you're stuck because that's what the union wants to do. I mean, unions are good, but there's ups and downs with everything. Maybe so. there could be an optional union in WWE only or something like that. I can maybe see they can that. just offer them health care and you know a few other perks for being independent contractors and make people you know let them own their real names. Start with yeah. that. Get rid of the union talk and just come up with some better rules. And yeah, get get rid of doing a union and come up with some better ideas for the talent. You know that that seems more feasible. Uh, WWE is also looking for new creative lead writers for Raw and SmackDown. The job is based out of Stamford in Connecticut. The lead writer will have the chance to manage, mentor, and develop experienced writers and producers uh, while compiling, editing, and developing weekly bullshit. I mean, stories. And you know what? And you know what? I knew about this position because every time there's a position for writer and these things open and I get flooded with Twitter, Joe, oh, yeah. you should apply. JD, you should, you guys should apply. Uh, as if we they're haven't applied a thousand TV times. Background people for this. I mean, yeah, they're, what, looking, they're, they're, they're looking for a Hollywood guy. Is insane. They're looking for a Hollywood person. And okay. come to find for. out that they've had this time, several continuity writers, you know, people in charge of managing continuity uh -huh. and Every single person they've hired for this position has been fired almost immediately. Now, that position, I would never want that one. I'm terrible with, like, continuity. I would actually want a continuity assistant. I'd be like, hey, let's have fucking Kane go up against this guy. And then this guy's like, yo, Kane doesn't, hasn't wrestled in, like, a year. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, or, like, oh, let's have this guy go up against this guy. Well, but we can't because that guy's injured right now because what's his face? Oh, yeah, that's right. Like, I need a continuity person. But I would come yeah. up, I, you know, I never wanted to be a writer, ever. I never wanted to be a writer, a thinker, a creative guy. I never wanted to do it. I want to be a commentator. See, I like the creative side of things. I wouldn't like to write stories. Yeah. It's where you prefer commentary. Yeah, I'd wrestling. rather, I want to be commentary or be a manager or be a, I want to have the microphone. Like, let's entertain some people. But I can do all the writing things now because this show sucks so bad. I come up with stuff and people are like, yeah, that's better than what they're doing. Because it sucks so much. Anybody can be a writer now. Anybody. Any, any one of you guys comes up with better ideas than what they do. Sadly, we, we can come up with things in, in seconds without even thinking it through. Uh, we did have some legitimate injuries suffered during NXT this week. Arturo Ruas, who was apparently just sent back to NXT from the Raw brand recently, uh, apparently has a torn bicep, so we wish him well. And then Rhea Ripley, they actually had to cut pieces of her ear to make it look normal again after Io Shirai ripped out those five earrings on both sides. So. <sighs> Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Um, Pat McAfee, uh, in his latest, uh, you know, talking to Busted Open Radio, he said that he wouldn't want to go to the Losers. main roster. <laughs> he doesn't think he'd do well there. Uh, besides his personal obligations to his job, you know, the podcast and all that stuff, he has employees, things like that. He just says that, you know, the main roster is not something that would suit him well, even though it, it has been discussed and something, you know, he says, I don't think it would be good for me, even though it's a bigger platform. It wouldn't be good for me to be a part of. So at least he's honest, but you can tell that's not something that he's interested in. Uh, continuing on, you mentioned this the other day, but it is it is nice to hear, you know, Jade Cargill uh, kind of reflects on what made her get into wrestling. And she said, I've always been muscular and, you know, on the bigger side. And people have always teased me for looking like a man or being too muscular. So when I was growing up, I saw China and I saw how she embodied her looks and, you know, Every, you know, she came across so powerful and she said, you know what? I look good. These muscles look great. And she allowed China to be uh, kind of like a mentor to her. So that that's huge. Yeah, I was and really it, happy kinda, to hear that. I was like, wow, because yeah. we, we were comparing her to that. And then it, she compares yeah. herself to that, to China. 
So that was so fucking exciting to hear her say that. that's how aware she is, like self-aware and a fan she is. Uh, it also seems like uh, with Retribution, Mercedes Martinez, the reason as to why she was not included in that stable any longer, uh, it seems to be because of the pandemic. She has asthma, very bad asthma, apparently. Huh. And she also has an immunocompromised son at home. So she had some, you know, pretty serious health risks and, you know, issues that that would be adverse to going outside during a pandemic. So she was pleading with people, just a reminder, we're still in a pandemic, always wear your mask. And this is where she, you know, talks about having asthma and an immunocompromised son. So take COVID seriously and stay yeah. healthy. And, and listen, a lot of people with asthma still make it and all these other things, but it's still scary to them because they know... Like, I look at my son, like, my son has asthma. M my daughter has kicked this thing's ass already. And I've, it's, I think it's already left me, too. I, I feel fine. The only thing is my sound like I'm sick. I'm not sounding, I blew my voice out. It's not the sickness. It's I blew my voice out. So I had a little, I had some snots. I, that's it. I had some snots the other day. But the kids were sneezing and sneezing and coughing. And now Finn, my son, is breathing like <laughs> at night. That's how he sounds at night. But, Last February, he had the same thing when he got sick, and then he got ear infections. Yeah. And it's all because of his asthma makes everything slower and shittier. So he's like, he, you know what I mean? Like, the sickest person in the house is Finn, my son, the four-year-old. The second sickest person in the house is Leah, because Leah has asthma. So, yep, so but, but Brenna doesn't, Gavin doesn't, and I don't. And all three of us are like... Like, especially me, I just Doing killed okay. it. Dude, I'm on fucking vitamin C and vitamin D and fucking um, goddamn, uh, what's it called, zinc. I'm t I take the fuck out of everything every day right now. I've been doing it for a while. And uh, my body just went, oh, yeah, I think I got that thing. Oh, like, it was gone. It was, like, done. My body shit on it. I mean, maybe I'll die tomorrow. Who knows? But the bottom line is, like, I can see how you're scared because I'm, I can see that my son is having the most difficult time battling a, f a cold. So yeah, and it's scary when you can't do anything to make him better. You know. Yeah, I mean, when I took him to the doctor last year, I thought he was having breathing problems and all these other things, and he's having the same thing right now. And when I took him to the doctor, doctor listened and was like, "No, he sounds fine inside. He does. He's like wicked congested up and sounds really bad, but he, but his lungs sound great, so he's okay. Okay, look at his ears. Okay, I'm gonna look at his ears. His, that ear's fine. That ear seems to be fine too. Are you sure he gets ear infections every time he gets sick? Okay, yeah, this one's infected. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So one ear is infected. So like none of the other kids got that. So it's just like, I can understand like you're different people. It's just different. But every time it's like, he is the most sickest. Everybody get, if everybody, I haven't been sick. I haven't been really sick in a year and a half. I haven't been sick in almost two years. The only time I was sick last was a sore throat. I remember when I had a, and I get a cough every year around January, I get some kind of weird dry cough. Um, Happened last year, happened the year before, but I never got like sick, sick for the last couple of years. Um, but everybody else in my house gets sick, and then Finn just gets just tooled when he gets sick. He's like, <gasps> like it's just fucking crazy. Um, so I can see somebody else with a people with asthma and people who are sick, sick or have problems. It's just very scary. Anyway, I, I, I ranted too long about that, but I just I know what you're talking about. Uh, moving on. So hopefully it'll be okay. It's always worse when, especially the younger they are, that that's what makes it worse too. So, uh, Sasha Banks bringing some good news to your side of things. She wants to go ahead and become a Victoria's Secret model. Oh, cool. She, she so get the fuck plans. out of wrestling and go show your pussy. She wants to be part of, she wants to do a movie. She wants to make her album finished. She wants to do a bunch of music videos. She wants to be a Victoria's Secret model. She wants to be in Sports Illustrated. Uh, she wants to, she oh. says, I want to keep creating and I want to have a wrestling business, uh, healing Academy. So that's something new, what? but it sounds like a lot of plans outside of WWE. So, and in the meantime, though, Ugh. she said that she's really looking forward to having new feuds and matchups. And that was like, you know, heaven to my ears An angel got their wings when she said this, she's like, I can't wait to have singles matches with people that I haven't faced before or never gotten to do much with like, Liv Morgan and Bianca Belair. So that that's refreshing to hear. At least she has her eyes set on the future and, you know, really is trying to go ahead and bring new women into the fold. Uh, one thing I forgot to bring up as well earlier was The Undertaker. He was talking to where at this point? Sports Illustrated, excuse me. 
He said that Brock Lesnar did not need to take the streak from him and that it really didn't do anything for Brock. He's already an attraction. Yeah. He was coming off a big UFC win, and he was always going to be the beast. Even if right. he lost, it would have been fine. He said that he should have lost it to Roman Reigns. He said that if he lost the streak to Roman, it would have done much more for Roman than it did for Brock. Oh, yeah. Yep. We said that, too. We were, But in, in a way, even though that's true... It sort of did launch Brock Lesnar into this juggernaut of a, like, this is the impossible boss to beat. It really did launch Lesnar into, like, a five- or six-year run of just monster, and this is the guy, like, that ended the streak. And the, like, But at the time, I remember we didn't we couldn't believe that either. We were like, why does he need to beat, like, it should have been a younger guy or somebody like that. Why does Brock Lesnar need to beat the streak? What the fuck's going on? But, you know, it's... um. Yeah, looking back on it now, it's like he didn't need it. And even then, we said he didn't need it. But during that Undertaker five or said, six year run, it was like that really kind of cemented Lesnar as this top guy. So Lesnar could take on the younger guys. It was weird. Yeah, right? but he didn't, you know, he wasn't set there to put people over. It was just to bring in viewers for Lesnar. Yeah, it so. didn't do anything for anybody. They, they burned every yeah. they burned every lamp they had, and they don't have anything left now. Yep. And, and there's nobody dark. to help them light another one that's the problem there's no one left as, as taker saying he's like i remember it clear as day usually vince comes to you go to vince's office he came to me in the dressing room that day of mania and he said i know exactly what he was coming in for he uh -huh. gave me his spiel i said are you sure because once we do this we cannot go back once the streak is broken it's broke so i had a few questions that made him think for a second and he was like yeah that's what i wanted to do and i said okay that's what we'll do and he said that was it and he went and he went through with it. So he, he he said, I could have questioned it and I could have argued against it, but I just agreed. So well, I, I wish that he had argued it. And uh, the last thing of, of actually regarding with Survivor Series is last week they were supposed to have a qualifying match to add the last spot on the men's team for Survivor Series on SmackDown side of thing. And that spot was supposed to go to Big E. Problem was two of the segments they had ran over time. So the backstage segment and the qualifying match never got to take place. So tomorrow night they're going to add Big E into the last spot. You know, it, it'll probably be just kind of but a, without a getting rushed the, shoe in. But without but getting the match the, to like actually like make him. It seem, seems like for what the rumor is now, is it won't be a match. It'll just be a segment, and he'll get put in. Oh God, he really probably. Could I hope it. they go through with a qualifying match at least, even if it's short. Then at least you could say, well, he qualified for yeah, it. Yeah, he like you got to make it so he like he earned it. You exactly, know? and we're at Survivor Series. We have six matches in all. Uh, four of the six matches, as I was saying earlier, you know, they they don't really matter because it's champion versus. Let's, champion. let's do Survivor Series tomorrow. You want to save it? Let's save it. This okay, is, we're dead. Right, whatever now. you want to do. Let's save it for tomorrow. Survivor Series tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Hit that like button on your way out. It's 140. Fuck this. The Undertaker's got $1,000 on Cameo. Go give him. Go buy the Joe Cronin show a Cameo with The Undertaker saying Joe Cronin's God. Rest in peace. Let's let's do it. Who's rich out there? Uh, imagine that. <laughs> it's me, your uh, favorite wrestler, The Undertaker, at the Joe Cronin show. And I want all the JCS army to rest. Like I can't do it because my voice is fucked up. It would be something like, like I said, you know, I, I don't see the, the all-out value in it. But if you got money to throw away like that, go for it. Throw it away. Hit that like button and throw it away. Throw it away. I'll see you tomorrow for the Survivor Series predictions and for monetize this live on Joe uh, Corrupted Nation. Come on over to Corrupted Nation tomorrow night for monetize this. I'm going to bang somebody over there. I'm really going to tear it up tomorrow night. All right? So bring your shit. Bring your fucking shit. Bring your shit, Jake. I'll fuck you. And yeah, Dave Chappelle on Rogan. Fuck yeah, bro. I'm yeah, I guess he was only there for a little bit of time. But he popped I'm in at the end like, bit. oh, yeah, you're still doing this? I was here to pick up Darnell. Oh, what's up, everybody? Hey, I'll come do one of these for real sometime. He said he would do a real one after the election or the inauguration. Well, that'd be good. Whenever that is. Look, so we could be yeah. waiting a couple of years. Yeah. January, you know. If you guys want to support my channel and support this show and keep this show on the air, uh, patreon.com 
slash Joe Cronin Show. Become a patron tonight. We've lost a couple key producers, so if you could uh, check that out, give it a look. Maybe you want to become a producer. Get your name up on this bitch. Not that guy. Not him. Where, where is it? Now, now there it is. Get your name on the producers list. Every single show you're in the you're in the description box down below is a producer credit, and up on the screen, of course. Sign up and become a producer. That's cr- but even if you just do five bucks a month, you get thirty hours of content a month on Patreon. Um, so yeah, check out the Patreon and uh, check out Jake's nudes. Oh. So, yeah, keep us on the air, baby. Check it out. Before I'm doing this, saying this. What the fuck happened to my radio show? You don't want to be saying what the fuck happened to your radio show. We got we to gotta now compete with about 100 other fucking streamer people who do wrestling. So, if you want to keep this show on the air and you like the shows... I'm fucking telling you, man. It's getting dangerous out there. Yori the Don. J-Man from KC. Colonel Stutters. Jerome Spicer. Kevin Murphy. Tony from Revere. Firebird 87. Cold Brew Crew. Dwayne Crenshaw. Six. Five, three, five. Mr. Six. Joseph Lightsey. Sith Negan, the longest, largest patron. Sith Negan. Arknolia Strugglebean. My son champion, Gary Metzler. Nikki J. Deweed God. Garguts Entertainment. Buenos noches. Brian Harper. John Zippe. ADTR. Gordon Bombay. Talk to me nice. Drew Bar 100, C.J. Bradley, Matt Rosmeyer, The Bear, 1322, <laughs> Jason Tarr, and J.D. Venom, one of the top donators all time, J.D. Venom, and one of the biggest OGs ever, Star Scream. Thank you to Star Scream. Thank you all, and all the people that are $1, $2, $3, $5, $10 patrons, and all the $10 VIPs out there, shout out to you for being sexy. Yeah, I didn't like his outfit, and I wasn't a big fan of his promo either, the Mr. Gentleman promo. Right, type. You, Allow me oh. to introduce myself. Are you going to fuck the guy? Or- See you tomorrow for the Survivor Series predictions. What's up?
my God. He did meet Cody at All In. Oh, no. Tits McGee. 